Hey guys, welcome to the inaugural Down With OPT card opening. I am Tom Franklin, and uh, what you are looking at right now, these, uh, this big box in front of me here, is an unopened 1990-1991 to 1991 OPT box of trading cards. Actually, I should take that back. The box has been opened before when I received this via the mail. Um, the box was open. There was no wax uh, um, cover or anything like that. But if we take a look inside the box, we're going to flip this open here. Open. These cards have never been opened. Um, these are still in their packs have not shown any signs of disturbance and uh, you can kind of see the back of them here just a little bit so these were made in London, Ontario, Soviet card SIF 1990 and yes it does have as you can see here on the ingredients a stick of gum inside no I will not eat the gum when I open these packs, I am not, uh, I'm not that crazy. Crazy enough to spend money on a, a box of trading cards that are 25 years old and have so few cards in them that are worth anything, it's probably not going to make a return on my investment, but I'm not that crazy to, uh, spend, um, my health on a piece of gum. So, what we got here is a, uh, entire box, as I said, we're going to open these a few at a time, uh, but before we start opening these, I do want to uh, uh, kind of get you in on a little bit of a trading card hunt with this particular uh, box of trading cards. Now, according to Tough Stuff, which of course uh, is a uh, trading card uh, price database, um, there's a few cards from this, uh, uh, this series that have some value to them. Hopefully, none of them have the gum stuck to them. Um, but taking a look here, uh, Jeremy Roenick, his rookie card is in this set. It's worth a buck seventy-five. Wayne Gretzky, a buck fifty. Curtis Joseph, a dollar. Mario Lemieux, a dollar. Uh, Patrick Wall, a dollar. Of course, the Cujo is also a rookie card. Uh, Mark Recchi, his rookie card's worth a dollar. Mike Richter is worth a dollar. Mike Madonna's rookie card, two dollars. Adam Graves, a buck twenty-five for his rookie card in this set. Richter and Recchi are also rookie cards. Uh, but the big tamale, the big tamale in this set, and the one that would actually have some decent value nowadays, uh, because he is now going into the Hall of Fame, that would be Sergei Fedorov, his Central Red Army card from this set of hockey cards is worth $5. I know you're laughing, that's not very much, but you know what? We're going to hunt for that Central Red Army card, and as you can see on the front of the box, I'm going to flip this back over here, uh, you take a look at this little uh, sticker here, includes Special Russian Insert Card Series, so we are going to be on the hunt for one Soviet in particular in this set. Now, before I open these cards, I should uh, let you know um, that these cards, and what makes this so awesome, at least in my opinion, what makes this so awesome is the fact that these cards have not seen the light of day since before grunge was cool, uh, and the Soviet Union was still a thing in 1990, 1991. It was on its last legs, but it was still there. The Cold War was still going on. Uh, Millie Vanilli, I think, had not been caught as frauds yet when these cards were made. Um, and uh, that was the last time these cards saw the light of day, folks. Uh, which is what makes this so cool, at least in my opinion, anyway. Uh... So here we go. We are going to open the first of this box of trading cards. I'm going to break these up into a couple of video podcasts, I think, uh, simply because I know your time is valuable. We're going to go to about 10 minutes or so on each video podcast. Uh, right now we're at about the five-minute mark because I had to explain just what the hell I'm doing here. So without further ado, let's open up some cards, shall we? All right. All 
right. The very important first card here. These are, this is open for the first time in 25 years, folks. Here is the stick of gum. It is hard as a rock. I can tell you that for a fact. All right. So we're going to flip these around here. First card we got here is a Central Red Army card. But it's not Sergei. It is none other than Igor Maslinikov, who played five games, had one goal, three assists, four points total for the Soviets. Um, so that's our first Soviet card. It's not the one we're looking for, though. Rick Vive. He was a right winger for the Sabres. And let's take a look at his uh, the back of the card here. 6'1", 192 out of Sherbrooke. Um, decent, decent player. A uh, very decent player, actually. You can see uh, uh, he, was, uh, he had over 400 goals. Um, never heard of this guy before, actually. Um, but very interesting. Of course, this card is not worth um, very much. Jim Korn, a defenseman for the Calgary Flames. And uh, big guy, 6'4", 220. And uh, love those penalty minutes. So we're going to move on to the next one here. This is the uh, just a regular Islanders card. It's got some stuff here on the back. Just uh, um, showing how they did in 89 and 90. 131, lost 38. Even the Islanders back then were not that uh, great. So that's that. Mark Habscheid, a left winger for the Red Wings. And uh, he only played, uh, up until this point, only one season for the Red Wings. Had 15 goals, 11 assists. Um, 23 goals, 31 assists for the North Stars of the year prior to that. Uh, played for the Saskatoon Blades. The St. Louis Blues almost ended up there in the 80s. Doug Bodger. Uh, this guy is, uh, is you know, he's, he's not a superstar, but he was one of the more notable defensemen back in his day. Um, at this point... Um, let me see, does it say his age at all on here? Okay, born in 6, 1866. So by this point, he would have been about 24, 25 years old. And already he, uh, actually that can't be right. My math is just terrible. I, I guess he was only, I guess he was 24. He must have started in the league very young. Um, but yeah, those are his stats right here. Good, good scoring stats for a defenseman. Rick Mahar. Uh, Rick Mahar uh, winning the Selkie Award. Rick Mahar was a uh, blue for a while. Of course, I'm a St. Louis Blues fan, for those of you who do not know me. Um, and this is when he won it with the Blues. So, of course, it's a word to the NHL's top defensive forward, uh, to Rick Mahar. It's long been recognized as a top defensive center. Um, I, I like This is a good resume. He held Steve Eiserman, Wayne Gretzky, and Mario Lemieux to a combined one goal in three consecutive games in October. It's got to be a record. And this is a general Montreal Canadiens card. Canadians were boss in this time of history. Uh, 89-90 uh, final standings, uh, 141, lost 28. Um, this year they this year they were kind of off, but I know I know they were they were still a pretty strong team uh, during that time period. Uh, I think Patrick Waugh was on his way uh, on his way up. I don't think he was on the the 90-91 team. I could be wrong though. And finally, Rod Langway, defenseman for the Capitals. And um, here are some of his stats. Another big guy. Um, not not really a goon, but um, you can see by his skill set, he's a puck mover. Uh, didn't score a lot of goals. So uh, that is Rob Langway. All right, our first pack is now done. And uh, we're going to open up the second pack here. All right, I had to restart the video there because we uh, were running out of time. But I'm gonna open up another pack here, see if we can get someone that is uh, that actually has value um, for uh, uh, for this uh, particular set. Again, we are looking for, uh, especially we're looking for the Central Red Army card of Steve 
not Steve Eisman, Sergey Fedorov is worth five dollars. Uh, other valuable ones: the Mike McDonald rookie card, the Jeremy Roenick rookie card, and of course the great one Wayne Gretzky and Adam Graves. Uh, those have some value to them. So number two is coming up. You know, I remember when I was young, by the way, this is this is bringing me back to when I was young and my dad would buy uh, entire boxes of cards like this, and he would let me open one pack a night. One pack a night, folks. Um, th those were some good times. Those were some good times, and I, and, and I remember those times finally. I still have those cards. Um, in fact, they're actually at my dad's, as a matter of fact, so uh, I may have to bring those out once I add these to the... Uh, to the uh, mix. So, again, down with OPG continues. Oh, we're starting off with a uh, very nice forward, uh, Joe Mullen. Get that uh, piece of gum out of there. Um, I think this might be backwards, so McSorley's coming up too on this one. Uh, Joey Mullen. Uh, very nice scoring forward for the longest time. Uh, started off with the Blues, of course, and then uh, uh, went to the Calgary Flames. Very interesting. Uh, um, you know, I'll show you a little bit, let you read over the Joe Mullen card while I explain. The interesting um, kind of, there was, like a, there was like a trade canal going on between the Blues and the Flames in the late 80s, of course. Uh, the Flames benefited from the Blues because they were able to acquire, number one, Joe Mullen, uh, native St. Louis, and by the way, well, well, not native, but he considers St. Louis his home even still. Um, as you see, he was traded to Calgary in uh, 1986. Uh, the Blues uh, got Brett Hall from Calgary. Uh, I think Calgary was fed up with Brett. They thought he was lazy and... Uh, um, give uh, Ron Caron, the GM for the Blues, a lot of credit for giving a chance on him. And then, of course, the Blues had to trade away Doug Gilmore whenever uh, some allegations came about that he uh, has some inappropriate relations with a babysitter. Um, so, you know, just very interesting. And then, of course, the Blues ended up getting a few years later from this, um, from, from, from the Doug Gilmore trade. That was about 1990. Um, the Blues ended up getting um, Al McGinnis, from, direct from, from Calgary in exchange for uh, Phil Housley. Housley played 26 games with the Blues before being traded to the Flames for McGinnis. Of course, Housley is going into the Hall of Fame. So Joe Mullen, we can add now uh, to our growing list. Flip these around. Valerie Kaminsky. This is the uh, uh, another Central Red Army card. Looks like we got two of them this time around. Not our, not our Sergei Fedorov. We're going to flip this around. Valerie Kaminsky, of course, he played uh, um, a long time with the uh, uh, Colorado Avalanche, made his name there. You can see he's uh, played, uh, at this, by this point, just a few games with the uh, uh, Central Red Army. So, But I think he was due to hit the NHL not too long after this. So, Valerie Kaminsky. Um, here is another one, uh, Alexei Frolikov, a left winger. Don't remember this guy. I don't think he ever made it over to the States, and if he did, he didn't do anything of note. But you can see, there you go, uh, Dynamo Moscow, um, two goals, one assist in four games. Didn't do so good when going to Dynamo Riga. So, uh, that's Alexei Frolikov. Some Central Red Army cards we got so far, but not the Sergei Fedorov we're looking for. Hey, it's Jim Waite. Jim Wade, a backup goalie uh, for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Um, you see, he doesn't... Look at those goals against averages, by the way. Uh, you know, this was a time in history um, where you just... You just scored so many goals. I, it just it was, it was a much looser game uh, back then, in, in more ways than one. You know, you know that was the, this was the era of the enforcer. But yeah, look at these goals against average. You know, eleven games, five point two two goals against average. About forty three goals in eleven games played. Youch. Um, and I think Jim Wade did actually uh, hang around in the league for a little while, but that's just. Gosh, that is just brutal. Uh, he was a young guy at this point, too. Born uh, 4 1569 And so that would put him about 21 years old at about this point. Uh, Marc Fortier from the Quebec Nordiques. He's a left winger. 
We flip over his card and we see that he is a goal scorer of 20 goals and 19 assists in 88 and 89. Okay, I'll stop with a French accent. Um, I don't remember this guy very much, but... Um, um, you can see, read the card a little bit. By the way, I encourage you, if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause, read the card if you want. Uh, just learn some of uh, his um, background here. Strongest part of his game is his ability to read the play as it develops. He is a top opportunist around the goal. We should, you know, more card companies should use the word opportunist, I think. All right, Craig Wolanin, also a uh, Nordique. He is a defenseman. And uh, this guy is 6'3", 205, big guy, not afraid to uh, throw his weight around a little bit. Get this back focused again. Um, kind of read up some of him. Former number one draft choice, Craig Wildanen, by the way. Uh, plays positional defense, doesn't easy, he's a stay-at-home guy, and that's really all they had to say about him. So there you go. Former number one overall pick, Craig Wildanen. There you go. Ooh, another one. Another Central Red Army card. Sergei Makarov. I do remember this guy. He did uh, make it over to the uh, um, uh, state side, I think, for a couple of years. So we're going to flip this around. And um, see, so he's a defenseman. And that's really all they got to say about him because the Soviets were not exactly known for their. Uh, openness in their uh, record keeping, but kind of a small guy from only 5'8", 165, and I do remember he was an offensive guy. So there we go. Rick Mahar again. This is our first duplicate, and it's a guy that, uh, you know, you heard me, heard my spiel about him before. Um, Rick Mahar. Small guy, 5'8", 175, and um, yeah, Rick Mahar... The one you saw before was when he won the Selkie. This is just his general card here. And uh, very good defensive forward back in his day. Very good defensive forward. I think he may have also ended up a Calgary Flame at one point because that's what Blues did. And, and you know, if you play for the Blues in the late 80s, early 90s, there's a good chance you ended up as a Calgary Flame. So there you go. And finally, the infamous. We have him as a right winger, too. Marty McSorley. Marty McSorley, of course. Uh, no one can swing a stick like the mighty Marty McSorley. We're going to turn this around take a look at some of his stuff. Uh, he's a right wing. 6'1", uh, 210. Uh, by this point, he was about 27, so he was about hitting his prime. Look at those penalty minutes. Good gosh almighty. The stats from this era, just just amazing. Um, 70, you know, he started off with the Penguins. You know, it's about a... Three penalty minute a game clip there, and then 50, you know 265 and 59. That's almost five. Uh, just you know, he's a punishing hitter, emotional play, can inspire his teammates, and if you're Donald Brashear, can um, give you some problems later later on. So I think that's all we'll have to say about that. So all right, the first two packs of Down with OPT are in the books. I'm going to have some more for you here coming up in just a little bit. So far, no real cards of value at this point. I had just some interesting names. We're still on the hunt for the Sergei Fedorov Central Red Army card along with um, a couple of other cards that have some decent value. So the music has stopped, so I guess that means I must stop as well. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time on Down With OPG.